Hey internet student, welcome to the brief tutorial of statistics. My name is Matthias Bertel, I'm a professor for mathematics and statistics at the University of Applied Sciences in Offenburg. And in this video, I'm going to explain what concepts such as variance and standard deviation mean and how they are being used. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss any of my other videos. But now to the measures of variability. All descriptive statistics are more or less about summarizing datasets, which normally consist of many data, by using diagrams or just a few indicators. In a different video, I already have introduced one group of such indicators, the measures of central tendency, also called means. Characterizing a distribution by its mean is quite a useful thing to do, however, it clearly doesn't tell the full story. Another thing of interest would be the diversity of the data, because it is possible that all data values are fairly similar, but it is also possible that they are very different. For example, the carrots coming from one farm might all be more or less the same size, while the sizes of carrots from another farm might be very different. Or in one geographic region, we might find a relatively similar number of daily hours of sunshine across the year, whereas in another region there might be quite a lot of fluctuation. And even colors can be very similar or very different. If all we do is looking at an average, we will miss such differences. Take for example Patrick and Anna, who both work in business consulting. Over the past 5 days, Patrick worked for 8.5, 10, 8, 9 and 9.5 hours. Anna, on the other hand, worked for 12, 5, 14, 6 and 8 hours on the very same days. Consequently, they both worked a total of 45 hours during that week, which is an average of 9 hours per day. However, Patrick's hours were pretty much the same every day while Anna has some very short, but also some very long working days. In consequence, that suggests that Patrick's and Anna's working conditions are very different. If we only looked at the average working hours per day, we simply wouldn't notice that, and would therefore get the wrong impression. Let me illustrate the situation on a number line. First, I'll put a red mark at the average number of working hours per day, which was 9, and then one mark for each of Patrick's working hours, and the same thing for Anna. In the illustration we can see that Patrick's working hours are all pretty close to the average of 9, while Anna's working hours are distributed across a much wider range. This being different is called variability, spread or dispersion. It is quite obvious that in Anna's daily working hours, there is much more variability than there is in Patrick's. Because the decisions are being paid for expressing things as numbers, we now need a way to indicate the degree of variability in just one value. Such values, or rather the formulas to calculate such values, are called measures of variability. The probably simplest measure would be to calculate the distance between the largest and the smallest data value, because that obviously indicates whether all values are located close to each other or spread out across a wide range. In the case of Patrick, this distance is 10 minus 8, i.e. 2, and in the case of Anna, it is 14 minus 5, i.e. 9. And from that we can tell there is more variability in Anna's working hours than there is in Patrick's. This measure, largest minus smallest value, is being called range and would normally get the symbol uppercase R. And there we have a first way of expressing variability in just one number. However, the range is definitely not a perfect measure because it pretty much ignores all data except for the largest and the smallest value. A really unpleasant consequence of that is that outliers always have a direct impact on the measure, while at the same time everything between the largest and the smallest value gets ignored. 
Therefore, it might be better to have a measure of variability which takes into account all values in the dataset, instead of just two. So let's consider the following. Being spread out could also be seen as deviating from the average. Consequently, we could take all the differences between each individual data value, xi, and the arithmetic mean, x bar, of the dataset, and calculate an average across all these differences. However, if we do it the way I'm doing it here, we would always end up with zero. That would always be the case, irrespective of the dataset, because all positive and all negative deviations will always be cancelling each other out, which is simply a consequence of the definition of the arithmetic mean. To avoid that, one can simply take the absolute value of all differences, which results in positives, and the average of all absolute differences would be 16 divided by 5, since we're looking at 5 values, and that is 3.2. The rule sum of absolute difference between all the data values and their arithmetic mean divided by the number of values is being called mean absolute deviation. Oftentimes this is being referred to as MAD, for mean absolute deviation, you know, it's pretty mad, but anyways, there we have a second measure of variability. Let me quickly also calculate the mean absolute deviation for Patrick's working hours, which results in 0.6, and now again we can see there is more variability in Anna's working hours than there is in Patrick's. In principle, we would be done by now if we weren't going to use the measure of variability in some more calculus. And you may remember, or maybe you've erased that memory, but using the absolute value in calculations is fairly inconvenient, as it always requires, yeah, that's right, a case-by-case -case analysis. And do we want that? That's what I thought. This is just one of a few reasons why a different measure of variability is much more common, and that is the so-called variance. Its symbol is S square. The rule is very similar to the mean absolute deviation with just one modification. To avoid that differences between data values and their average are cancelling each other out, instead of using the absolute value, one could just use the square of each difference because squaring values gives us positives as well. The remainder of the calculation is exactly what we've done before. We sum everything up and divide by the number of values. For Patrick, we find that the variance is 0.5, and for Anna, it is 12. And again, we can see there is more variability in Anna's working hours than there is in Patrick's. Let's note down the formula that we just used, and that is sum of all differences between the data values and their arithmetic mean to the power of 2 divided by the number of values. A little side note here. When we will get to speak about sampling, maybe in a later video, we will be using a slightly modified formula for sample data, and that is we will not divide by n, but by n minus 1. I will explain why as soon as we get there, but for this video, we divide by n, the number of all values. It wouldn't be statistics if we were done by now. We're not, because every time we solve the problem, there is going to be a new problem. That's just like life. And we can actually see that problem a little when we look at Anna's data values. Even the difference between the largest and the smallest value, i.e. the range, is not more than 9. If that is the case, how is it justifiable to say that the average difference is 12? The truth is, it is not. 12 is nothing like an average difference, and that is because we use the square for each of the differences. Therefore, the variance will normally be out of proportion in relation to the data values themselves. Maybe it is not that obvious here, but it gets really crazy when numbers become larger. Let's, for example, not talk about hours, but minutes, and note that Anna did work 720, 300, 
840, 360 and 480 minutes. The average would then be 540 minutes, obviously 9 hours times 60 minutes per hour, but variance is not 60 times 12, but 3600 times 12, which is 43200, which is clearly a totally different order of magnitude than the data values. For exactly that reason, it is also difficult to depict what the actual meaning of the variance is. However, that can be solved easily by taking the square root and the result is being called standard deviation. The square root of 43200, for example, is approximately 207.8 and that is much better in proportion with the dataset. The standard deviation for Patrick's working hours is the square root of 0.5, which is approximately 0.7. And for Anna's working hours, it is the square root of 12, which is approximately 3.5. And if we compare the two standard deviations, we can again see there is more variability in Anna's working hours than there is in Patrick's. For completeness, let's note down the formula for the standard deviation. The symbol is a lowercase s, no square this time, and we simply reuse the formula that we created for the variance and take the square root. And that is our third measure of variability. I've got one measure of variability left for you, which may be a useful modification depending on what you're trying to analyze or express. Imagine that Anna is self-employed and works on her own, whereas Patrick works as a partner in a small agency. This would also explain why there is more variability in Anna's working hours, as we've seen and underpinned by all the measures of variability. Let's further assume that Patrick's agency over the past five months collected revenues of 200, 190, 210, 216 and 184 thousand dollars. While Anna collected revenues of 28, 8, 18, 2 and 24 thousand dollars. Now let's just for fun calculate the standard deviation again for both datasets. So we first find the average, then the square of all data values minus the average, the sum of that divided by 5, and taking the square root gives us approximately $11,933 per month for Patrick's agency. Let's also do that for Anna. And we find exactly the same value, approximately $11,933 per month. The variability measured in terms of the standard deviation is identical for both the datasets. This is probably fine from a mathematical point of view, but looking at it from Anna's perspective should leave us much less relaxed. While it is true that some months yield a very nice revenue for her, it is also true that she needs to deal with that very carefully because in some other months she might otherwise have trouble paying the office rent. In Patrick's agency, on the other hand, this is probably not going to be the case because they always are far from coming close to zero. Although in mathematical terms the standard deviation is the same for both Patrick's agency and Anna, the practical implications are very different. A standard deviation of let's say $12,000 around an average of 18,000 can be very different from a standard deviation of 12,000 around an average of 200,000. We therefore should always look at both average and standard deviation. Or we simply combine the two by dividing the standard deviation by the arithmetic mean. This measure of variability is called coefficient of variation or relative standard deviation. The symbol is normally a lowercase c and the rule is take the standard deviation and divide by the arithmetic mean. For Patrick's agency the coefficient of variation is 11,933 divided by 200,000 which is approximately 0.06 and for Anna it is 11,933 divided by 18,000 
which is approximately 0.66. The interpretation would be, the average variability of revenues in Patrick's agency is around 6% of the mean. For Anna's business, it is around 66% of the mean revenue. The coefficient of variation is therefore also a simple risk measure. And here are all measures of variability at one glance. The range, which is the largest minus the smallest data value. The mean absolute deviation, which is the average of the absolute differences between all data values and their arithmetic mean. Variance almost the same thing, just using a square instead of absolute values. The standard deviation, which takes the square root of the variance. And the coefficient of variation, which is the standard deviation, put into relation to the dataset's arithmetic mean. All measures of variability are used to express how spread out the data values in a dataset are, which measure of variability is most appropriate depends on the situation and on what we want to assess by calculating the measure. That was my explanation of five different measures of variability. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any proposals for any new videos, just leave me a comment in the comment section. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.